Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. I am here at Isabella's Pottery Studio making a dragon pot today. Hi everyone. Here's so, it. Oh. This is what happened. I don't know how that happened, but... Here it is. So <laughs> the dragon is roughed in. Should I spin it? Sure. There it goes. So that we'll be putting a a slab on the bottom of clay and I may add feet to it and lots of details still to go and sculpting. So it's just kind of roughed out. That's and, how it starts. Yeah, and these will be the drainage for the pot. I won't put holes on the bottom. It'll drain out there and out here. Yeah, so that's my my friendly dragon. Very friendly. <laughs> doesn't look too mean or anything, does he? No, I <laughs> or don't know actually. He or she? It's um, I think it's a personal thing. But when you first put it out, I was like, oh, <laughs> it's in my face. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks very much, Isabella, for having me over. It was fun. You're very welcome. Had a I good know. garden tour today, and yeah. saw all your trees and your pots and. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was really fun, so thanks. You're welcome. Yeah. Hi everyone, it is day two of making my dragon pot. I brought the pot home because I've got to do a lot of detail work and I think it'll take quite a while. I kept the dragon pot wrapped in plastic overnight to keep the clay moist so it's still nice and workable for today. So there it is. So today I'm going to be doing more sculpting, getting it uh, more refined, and then I'll start doing the detail work, all the scales and small details. I bought a small set of sculpting tools when I was working on the temple, so I'll be using those today. Isabella also lent me some tools and these are useful for making the scales. You dig them in and then you move the scale outwards a bit to give it some texture. It will be a day of sculpting here in the bonsai zone, so here I go. I'm going to begin today by working on all the areas that dry out first, like the ears. They're very thin and the clay dries fairly quickly. All the fins on the back here, I've got to shape all those get all those details kind of worked out. I think the basic form is in place. There's some refining to the shape of it, but uh, that'll come. So those are the areas I'll work on, like the, the tongue and all the teeth and all that kind of, all that kind of detail work. And then I'll move on to doing all the scales and, well, more details, I guess. So I think the ears, I need like a hole so I'm going to sculpt away some areas here. And these will be sort of like cat's ears. This is a uh, inspired by a Chinese dragon, but it's not accurate to a Chinese dragon. It's a bit of my own design and a bit of a traditional Chinese dragon. So everything on the dragon is quite thick right now and then I'll be sculpting it away. So subtraction, sculpting, to get all the detail work in place. So you can see the ear is a little more interesting looking now. And that'll be the fun of this dragon, is making it very detailed. I have a spray bottle here with rainwater that I can mist the dragon to keep everything kind of moist as I'm working away at it. I don't want it, you know, too wet, but just enough to stop everything drying out as I'm working on the clay. So you can see that ear is much more flowing now. It's also less heavy looking. These sculpting tools are really handy 
and they're not very expensive. You can buy them at your hobby stores. So this one has a loop on the end so you can scrape away and make curved surfaces. So that ear's looking much better now. The plan is to brush an iron oxide glaze on the dragon when it's finished. That'll bring out all the details. It'll highlight them. And so the more details I put in the dragon, the more interesting it'll look when it's done. It'll have all those scales will all be highlighted and it should look quite nice. So it, it's important to get the form, you know, really nice before you start adding all the scales. That's the final step is all the details. And it'll have like a snake-like underbelly with the the scales that run right underneath and the top scales will be well, it'll look like a snake. It'll be the smaller scales on the top. And I'm trying to keep the dragon fairly symmetrical, working both sides. So that ear is roughed in now, so I will go to the other side now and start working on that. That looks nice and flowing. I've got the ears roughed in. I think they're looking pretty good. So now I'm going to work on refining these fins along the back, thinning them out, shaping them. And I'm using my straight wire for this one, this uh, tool. So I want the fins kind of like the fin on an airplane, rounded on the front and pointy at the back. So we'll get a bit of a chamfer here. that and again you know it adds more detail having a chamfer there it uh, adds interest to the dragon and I don't want to make these fins too delicate looking at the base here I want some kind of a detail uh, either a groove or a raised section something that separates these fins from the body so um, I think, you know, a line, I'll, I'll try to fill it first. Like that looks pretty good. I think that gives some good separation. I may even want to go a little, you know, more of a line. like this. And it's just trial and error. Um, there's a lot of details on this dragon that I tried different variations and some worked and some didn't. So you just keep trying uh, different ideas out and modifying them until you get something that you think looks good. So you can see I've got a bit of definition now between the fins and the body, which I think helps define them so it doesn't look like a big blob. It gives some edges. And these fins don't all have to be exactly the same. Um, you know, a bit of variation makes it look a little more realistic. If there is such a thing as a realistic dragon. It is just a fantasy creature. So that's looking better. Now the belly here, I think I will undercut a bit.
again so I get a bit of a, a, a definition, a defined area where the scales change shape. And it adds more interest again to the sculpture. And don't forget, your fingers are great tools. And just like a bonsai, you've got to check your sculpture from all angles. Make sure everything's looking good. It is not a two-dimensional piece. It's three dimensions, so you've got to always be checking it. So I think that's looking quite nice. So I have some clay under the head here just to support it so it doesn't sag while I'm working on it. That'll be removed in the end once the clay starts to harden, which will take a long time. You just let it dry slowly so it doesn't crack. Here's a look at my progress. So I've got a lot of these scales kind of thinned out, shaped. So I'm working my way around. There's a lot of scales to finish. <laughs> a lot of refinement to go, but it's, it's coming along. Another period of time has passed. I have no idea how much. So you can see the scales along the back are getting more refined. I'm working my way around. Lots to go. Lots and lots of scales to go. I'm kind of smoothing out the body as I go too. You know, if you look above, getting the curves nice so it's not lumpy looking and it's nice and smooth and curvaceous. So here's a look at how much clay I've subtracted so far off the scales. Imagine that'll double or triple in size by the time I've gone all the way, all the way around the dragon. So this is the pot here. The dragon will be surrounding. You know, there'll be a tree in here. Yeah, should look kind of cool. It is getting close to lunchtime. So I was playing around. I put some blobs of clay where I could possibly put feet. So here's kind of the front somewhere around here. It, uh, I, I think they would look good, like a claw here and then the back claw here. I won't put one on the inside because that's the pot area and same on this side. So I'd have to make two claws and I was thinking this claw back here because it rises up here it would look good to have a claw coming down to the ground sort of like the the foot is pushing the uh, body up. So I, I think that's a good location for them and you can see I've done a lot of work um, there's a lot to go, but uh, I made a lot of progress this morning, smoothing it out, getting my curves nice. Still working away on these uh, these back fins, but uh, it's coming along, and I've got the tail to do still. There's a lot of work. It's fun. I really enjoy it. So I'm going to have lunch, and then we'll come back and continue working on the dragon. Before I go for lunch, I'm just going to spray it down with water and it's interesting when you spray it with water It goes all shiny and you can see all the uh, All the bumps in that a little more clearly. So here I go spraying it with water Just go all the way around and It just keeps it moist. I'll put plastic on top of it while I'm gone for lunch Yeah, so that would be the back foot there so yeah, you can see how shiny it gets. It's actually pretty cool. My Tapram temple is getting some nice patina on it. It's been outside in the rain. So I'm liking the coloration on it. It's looking really, really cool. I can hardly wait to get to work on it and plant it up. It's going to be Quite something, I think. I am back from lunch and it's raining out once again. We got rain the other night. It rained all night and all yesterday. 
So my rain barrels are nice and full. I have lots of water, enough to last me another month. I am back to work on the dragon pot. It stayed nice and moist while I was away for lunch. In fact, it's kind of rehydrated the ears with the plastic. So I'm still working on all these fins, getting them all shaped and looking good. So I will continue to work on those. Oh, it's raining quite hard out. That's good. It means I don't have to water any of my outdoor trees today. So it'll give me more time to work on this dragon pot. Clay is such a wonderful material. It's so soft when you first start working with it and it slowly gets harder and harder and you can add more and more detail and smooth it and yeah, it's just a wonderful material. I must say that this is a very enjoyable way to spend an afternoon listening to the rain in the greenhouse here and just sculpting. It's a very, very nice way to spend an afternoon. I was on YouTube after lunch today and people mentioned in the comments that Peter Chan has announced that he's coming to Toronto this summer. So it'll be really nice meeting Peter and hopefully we'll have lots of fun looking at bonsai. I've got a piece of clay that I'm going to make the legs out of. So I just want to make sure it's all kneaded so there's no air bubbles in it or anything. It's nice and soft. So I want to make like an elbow coming forward to the foot, something like that. And that might be too much clay. So I think I'll make two legs out of this piece of clay. I think that'll be plenty. So I'll pinch that off. I'll put the other clay back in the bag. Keep it well hydrated. So I need an elbow coming forward to a foot. And I'm going to make three toes on the front and one towards the back. So there's one toe, two toes three like that and I'll make one coming out the back so that's kind of a foot just wet my hands make sure I'm keeping this clay moist this. I'll take away my placeholder clay and so I think something like that. It, it's still too big but and then I'll rough up the clay doing a series of scores. That's where I'll attach the foot. I'll wet it down. And then I'll score this part too. And I can attach the foot somewhere about here. So here I go. I'm going to really kind of push it in. Make sure the clay is firmly attached to the existing body. You don't want the legs separating and during firing. So that's roughed in and I, I think that looks pretty good, that position.
and then I'll sculpt it to get the shape looking good. But and I'm trying to keep it close to the original clay so it, it kind of is strong. I don't want a, a leg that could break off. So the one toe will be kind of attached here. Maybe a little bit of a gap, but not much. So I think it's firmly attached now. It, it's in a good, good position. So something like that, from the front it looks quite nice, you can see it there. So I'll do the same for the foot over this side. So I'll replace my placeholder here with my nice soft clay. So here it is. So I will score up the attachment point once again, just to get a good connection, and I'll roughly shape the foot again, making an elbow, so this one will come off the other direction like this, I'll make my three toes, one out the back, like that, just kind of, you know, roughly sculpting in the basic shape, and then it'll all get refined. And that'll get attached back here. Now, I have a support under the, uh, the dragon here, so I can take that away and it'll be replaced by the foot, which will hold that up while the whole dragon's drying. So I'll score this side up too, so I make a good attachment point. So here I go attaching the foot on here. Just check my position. I think that's going to be pretty good there. Joining the two pieces now. And again, it'll be kind of, well, it'll be close to the body because I don't want it too fragile. I want it to be a fairly strong support here. Here comes the sun again. So there's that foot roughed in. So let me check from the front view. Yeah, it's looking quite nice. I like the position of it. Makes for a very interesting pot. So I'll just spray that down to make sure everything's staying moist. So 
especially with the sun out here. And then I've got to start sculpting the feet. Generally the feet, you know, they look kind of like chicken feet, or rooster feet I guess they're supposed to be, or they look like T-Rex feet, because birds are dinosaurs. So there's kind of that foot roughed in. There'll be a lot of refinement coming to it, but it's uh, definitely roughed in now. Something like that. And then this one needs some refinement. I'll make the back leg a little stronger looking. So you can see how easily, you know, you can rough in pieces on your sculpture, add them, and then refine them. I think that's looking good. So I still have the support under the head which will stay there for quite a while till the clay hardens up a bit more. Now I think around the back I have some sponge holding this body up. I'm going to take it out and I'm going to replace it with some clay just so it's a little more firm holds it up a little better. Something like that. So I get a nice a nice coil there. A nice rise. And allow me to sculpt underneath here a little more without the sponge there. Okay, so I'm back to work on doing the the fins along the top of the dragon, refining those, I've got to go, I'm getting there, but I still have to refine all the tail and everything. The tail's just roughed in right now. So I will keep going. So the tail right now is a bit separate from the body here. I think I'll put some clay in there and just kind of reinforce the tail a bit. So I'll get some, a pinch of new clay and just add it into this gap in here, kind of filling that gap up and that'll strengthen the tail so it won't flop around and won't, you know, it won't risk cracking it off or anything as the clay dries. So I'm just like that, that makes it a lot more solid. Another period of time has passed, and I think it's getting towards late afternoon. Let's go in and look at the progress. Here is a look at the dragon. So I'm making progress. I even started roughing in some kind of scales down below. Yeah, so... I think the front of the pot would be somewhere about here. Uh, it's a pretty fancy pot. I don't know what a tree will look like in it, but... Oh, well. <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of what my dragon pot is looking like so far. So I still have a lot of detail work to go. But it's definitely making progress. Uh, it's changed a lot from when I started this morning. It's made... Yeah, a lot of progress smoothing it out and getting details roughed in and 
yeah but there's still a lot of work to go so I'll keep at it I really enjoyed the day sculpting my dragon pot there's thunderstorms rolling in now and it's getting quite dark out here in the greenhouse so I'm going to uh, continue the work on the dragon pot in tomorrow's video so that's all for today I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone.